Do you know about my app? It is Neela Bakore Tutorials. On this, I'm conducting live interactive classes with doubt solving sessions and DPPs. The link is given in the description below. So don't forget to download. If you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. In the previous video, we talked about innate immunity. That is the immunity that we have from birth. And we talked about four different ways in which we have this innate immunity. Physical barrier, physiological barrier, cellular barriers and cytokine barriers. Now let us talk about this acquired immunity. Acquired immunity is what we get after birth and it is specific. Now there are two cells which are responsible for this acquired immunity. And these cells are called B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. So B cells and T cells, this is uh, the common way in which we, uh, you know, know these cells. So these are the cells which are responsible. Now B cells are the ones which actually produce antibodies and T cells, they perform various functions. One type of T cell is called helper T cell and this helper T cell is going to help the B cell to produce the antibody. How that happens that we will see a little later. Now when we talk of this acquired immunity, we said it is specific. And this acquired immunity can be obtained in two ways. So acquired immunity can be further divided as passive and active. Now passive means our body is not going to do anything. We are going to ready-made or we are going to get ready-made antibodies. So for that, we need to understand antibodies. Antibodies are, again, very special protein molecules which are specific. Specific to a particular antigen. And the cells which produce these antibodies are the B cells. So whenever these antibodies are produced, there are some memory cells which are formed. We'll come to that in a minute. So what is passive immunity? Passive acquired immunity. That means we get ready-made antibodies. Ready-made antibodies. There are two which we anyways get. One is IgG. Now what is this Ig? It is immunoglobulin. So these antibodies, they are globulin proteins and they provide immunity. So we call them immunoglobulins. They are also known as immunoglobulins. And there are different types of immunoglobulins that also we will study. So immunoglobulin G, IgG, it reaches into the body of the developing fetus through placenta. So this is called transplacental. So mother's body produces this antibody and the ready-made antibody is transferred into the body of the fetus. So when a baby is born, it is born with IgG, but the baby did not do anything. Its body did not do anything. So this is a passive immunity. Similarly, there is one which is called IgA. This is passed on to the newborn along with milk. So it is present in colostrum. Okay. So these are prepared by the mother and passed on to the baby or fetus. That means the body of the baby is not doing anything. It is getting the ready-made antibodies. Now there is one more example. We get tetanus toxoid injection. 
this actually provides ready made antibodies to us anti venom this is also against which is given against snake bite and all it also has the ready made antibodies now what is active now there are two ways in which we can develop our own antibodies here we got the ready made antibodies you know what happens in case of anti venom preparation the venom is injected into the body of a horse in the body of the horse antibody production will take place then some blood is taken out from uh, the horse's body the serum is separated and in the serum is present the antibody so that serum is also known as anti sera so this is what we get so if there is a snake bite we immediately take that antibody which was prepared by the horse we have not prepared those antibodies we have taken the already made antibodies now if a live pathogen or a weak pathogen enters into our body if it is a live pathogen that means we get a disease and if we purposefully inject a weak or a killed pathogen then that is known as vaccine so active can be by vaccination and this vaccination program is called the immunization program or by getting a disease so when we get a disease that means the live pathogen enters into our body and our body makes the antibodies so it is actively involved in synthesis of antibody so this is active now what happens when a pathogen enters into our body and we are talking about this acquired uh, immunity first encounter with the pathogen it generates a mild response in our body this is called the primary response primary response is mild mild response that means there can be a mild uh, thing in our body it can result into a uh, mild fever sometimes diarrhea sometimes little rash on the body but everything is going to be mild 2 3 4 days and everything is uh, fine this is the first encounter of our body with the pathogen this is called the primary response it is a milder response but whenever this happens this also results in generation of memory in our body generates memory cells these cells which are called the memory cells they have been stimulated by that pathogen once so we have this thing ready in our body now after this suppose there is second encounter the second time pathogen enters second encounter then the response is known as the secondary response or anapneptic response or anapneptic response this is of a severe uh, type so this is severe response and it is fast this is mild and it is slow also this is severe and it is fast and this fast response will help in production of antibodies at a very faster pace and that is why we are able to defend ourselves against that particular pathogen so what happens normally in vaccination we take weak or killed pathogen so the first encounter is there with that weak pathogen and it is a primary response so anyways it is going to result into minor uh, reaction there can be mild fever there can be mild rash and 2 3 4 days everything is okay now second time or after that 
if the live pathogens enter into our body, we have these memory cells ready. And as soon as the live pathogen enters, the secondary response is there. And secondary response results in formation of a large number of antibodies. And they destroy all those live pathogens. And that is how we remain protected from these pathogens. Now, in the next part, we will talk about how these B and T cells work and what is the structure of the antibody.